The Arecibo message is a coded signal that was beamed toward the star cluster M13 in the constellation Hercules on November the 16th, 1974, using the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico. The signal, transmitted at 2380 MHz for 169 seconds, delivered an effective power of 3 trillion watts, the most powerful human-made radio signal ever broadcast up to that point. The message contained various information about the world and its human inhabitants, including the decimal numbers from 1 to 10, the DNA molecule, the world's population in 1974, what a human looks like and our average height, a model of the solar system, and some technical details about the Arecibo telescope. A technique suggested by the radio astronomer Frank Drake was used to encode the message and other scientists such as Carl Sagan helped decide its content. The message consists of a string of binary digits, zeros and ones. If the radio signal is converted to audio waves, this is what it sounds like. You can hear two distinct pictures. Although the message was sent at a frequency of 2380 MHz, it consists of two distinct signals separated by 10 kHz, one representing zeros and the other representing ones. Whoever receives the signal doesn't have to convert it to audio. They just need to understand there's a frequency shift that forms two separate signals. Suppose we're the aliens who've received the signal. The first thing we'd recognize is that it's artificial because a signal that's almost three minutes long and doesn't repeat itself can't be formed by any natural process. Then we'd discover that there's a set of high pitches and a set of low pitches. What do we need to decode the message? The answer is a combination of math, chemistry and biology. First, if we count the high and low pitches, we'll find there are 1,679 of them. This isn't just any old number, but a special kind of number known as a semi-prime. As you know, a prime number such as 13 or 23 can be divided only by itself in one without leaving a remainder. A semi-prime, on the other hand, can be divided exactly by other prime numbers as well as itself in one. 1,679 is a semi-prime because it can be divided exactly by 23 and 73, both of which are prime. This defines a 23 by 73 grid. If we create a grid with 73 rows and 23 columns, there'll be one signal, high or low, for each point. In math, there's a number system that has just two variables, the binary system, representing ones and zeros. If we assign low pitches to ones and high pitches to zeros and fill the grid, we get this image. Why did we assign high pitches to zeros? Because there are a lot of high pitches. Later, we will need to decode the binary numbers into decimal. If there are too many conversions, we'll end up with huge numbers that won't indicate anything. So we assign more pitches to zeros and fewer to ones. 
Once the Arecibo message has been visually decoded, it offers clues to who sent it. These include the double helix of DNA, what a human looks like, a model of our solar system, where Earth is on this model, and the structure of the Arecibo telescope. Let's move on and decode the various shapes. The first line represents the numbers 1 to 10. If we look at the first column, it's 001, which is 1 in the decimal system. The last cell is a marker to show how to decode the columns and where we need to start. The first rule for the marker is, we need to decode the binary code always towards the marker. We can decode the first seven columns easily. But 8, 9 and 10 are a bit different. We need a second rule. The second rule for the markers is, if there's more than one column, we need to start at the farthest column and decode the binary always towards markers. For example, if we take a look at the eighth shape, we need to start with this cell. So the eighth shape has 0010000 in binary, which is eight in decimal. Let's decode this shape. This cell is the marker. According to the second marker rule, if there's more than one column, we need to start at the farthest column and decode the binary code towards the marker. So we get this binary number, which is 4,292,853,000 750 in decimal. It gives the world population in 1974. Now we can translate all the binary codes into decimal. But what do they mean? Let's move on to this shape. If we decode the columns, we'll get the numbers 1, 6, 7, 8 and 15. Thinking in terms of chemistry, we can see that they refer to atoms, the atomic numbers of hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and phosphorus, the most important elements of life. This order is important for the other shapes. For example, when we decode this shape, we get the numbers 0, 0, 0, 4 and 1, which can be interpreted as meaning 0 hydrogens, 0 carbons, 0 nitrogens, 4 oxygens and 1 phosphorus. This is PO4, the phosphate group, which is a key component of DNA. If we decode the other shapes in the same way, we end up with the DNA molecule. In the middle of the DNA helix, we find the number 4,294,441,822. At the time the message was made, this was believed to be the number of nucleotide base pairs in the human genome. We now know that this number isn't correct and that the human genome contains only about 3.2 billion base pairs. Let's move on to this shape. It's 14 in decimal. If we multiply it by the wavelength of the message, which is 126 millimeters, we get 1,764 millimeters, the average height of an adult human. It's an important measurement because whoever receives the message doesn't have to know what a meter or a foot is. They just need to measure the wavelength of the message in terms of their own unit of distance and multiply it by 14. The last shape shows the Arecibo telescope and its diameter. If we decode this line, we'll get the number 2430. Multiplying this number by the wavelength of the signal gives the diameter of the Arecibo dish, 306.18 meters, or about 1,004 feet. 
It's a common misconception that the main purpose of the Arecibo message was to try to communicate with aliens. But if we think about the target, the Messier 13 star cluster, that's clearly impractical. Messier 13 is 25,000 light years from Earth, which means it will take 25,000 years for the message to arrive. No one's interested in communication times that long. If we want to try to get in touch with intelligent extraterrestrials, there are a lot of targets much closer to home. What's more, M13 is moving through space so that the message isn't even heading in the right direction. So what was the point in sending it? There were two main goals. The first was to devise a message that could be understood by aliens who know nothing about us or our language, but who do share a knowledge of math and science, the principles of which are universal. The second goal was to demonstrate that it was technologically possible, thanks to the Arecibo telescope, which was then the world's largest single aperture instrument, to send out such a powerful signal. Following the Arecibo message, a lot of attempts at communication with nearby star systems have been made. For example, between 1999 and 2003, nine different messages were sent in a project named Cosmic Call. Some scientists have argued that letting our whereabouts be known to other beings in the universe is a big mistake. Stephen Hawking, for instance, has said, Meeting an advanced civilization could be like Native Americans encountering Columbus. That didn't turn out so well. The fact is though, even if we didn't broadcast messages into space, it's too late to hide. Just as we'll soon have the ability to look for signs of life on planets going around other stars, so any intelligent races out there pointing their instruments at Earth will be able to detect the unmistakable signs of our presence. <laughs>